Hello, and welcome to episode 7 of our Explain the Basics series. This week's episode is titled Camera Settings, and as it suggests, this episode will cover terminology that you might come across in the back-end settings of your camera. Simple enough really, so let's get going with our first piece of terminology. Mainstream and Substream. These are two key terms that a lot of customers don't understand, but are crucial to successful recording and streaming when using IP cameras. Now, the mainstream is the primary stream that affects the data recording to your storage device, and the settings that you set this stream to will directly affect the quality of the stored recording. Also be aware that the higher you set the quality of this stream, the more bandwidth that camera will use, which is important to be aware of if you have a large system installed on a small network with limited bandwidth. After the mainstream, you have the substream, which is primarily used by smartphone apps and allows you to view the live stream of your camera without directly affecting the mainstream recording. Primarily, there are only two streams, but some more advanced cameras can offer three, four, or even more, but in most basic setups, you won't need to use more than two streams. Cut filter. The cut filter is used predominantly during the day when recording with IP cameras. Its job is to filter out the IR light as it enters the camera to help the sensor produce the best colour image it can. It then retracts when it gets too dark and the camera's IR activates. With the filter retracted, the sensor can now produce an image from the reflected invisible IR light. Most cameras come with a cut filter set to auto, which obviously means it will cut when the sensor thinks it's too dark to see on its own. Most cameras will also offer you the option to always have the filter on or off if your camera's location is well lit or very dark. Now, the final two options won't appear on every camera, but they are scheduled switch, which allows you to set the time of day when the filter activates, and the final one will only appear on cameras with alarm input output ports, as it allows you to set the filter to activate when an alarm is triggered. BLC BLC stands for Backlight Compensation. It's a crucial feature for anyone planning to install a camera indoors around any brightly lit doors or windows. What the setting does is, as the name suggests, compensate for any overly bright scene where the light is destroying any detail or clarity in the image. It compensates by automatically adjusting the sensitivity of the pixels affected most by the bright light to make them less sensitive, whilst at the same time increasing the sensitivity of the other pixels to extract greater detail. Now, most cameras with this setting will just have it as an on-off auto setting, but some camera models will give you an adjustable scale to fine-tune the amount of compensation, and this can be really useful if you want to be really specific on what you see, as just like autofocus, the auto BLC setting will sometimes not get it quite right. ROI ROI stands for Region of Interest. This feature is easily confused with motion detection, but it's actually completely different. What it does is allow you to set regions of the scene where things might happen, like doorways, windows and pathways, and then record what happens in these regions using camera substreams. This basically allows you to digitally zoom into any area of a scene and maintain greater image quality than a scene recorded without using the region of interest setting. So, how does it do this with minimal resolution loss and bandwidth usage? Well basically, when you select a region, the camera's software crops into that area and then optimises the image within the region, whilst at the same time greatly reducing the quality of the stuff we can't see outside the region. But obviously this isn't a perfect solution, don't be expecting movie quality enhancement, it only really works properly on the higher 5 and 8 megapixel resolution cameras, and even then the quality will be reduced as the digitally zoomed image can only be improved as far as the sensor will allow it. Thank you for watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please do by clicking here. Check the description below for links to our Facebook, Twitter and Google Plus feeds. Follow the link here for our web shop and if you want more videos like this, check out the playlist up here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.